All right, let's look at standard 12, substandard B. Identify the American Federation of Labor and Samuel Gompers. You know, we spoke before about the immigrants and urbanization, immigration and urbanization causing some worker or labor problems like uh, fire hazards, child labor laws, unequal pay, long hours, uh, unsafe working conditions, unsanitary water supply. We see a lot of these labor conditions uh, and workers eventually are going to join together in unions. The first federal union or the first alliance of several different unions come with the American Federation of Labor in 1886, uh, co-founded by Samuel Gompers, this guy here. It was a cigar maker and a part of the cigar uh, maker craftsman union. And he's going to, as leader, use collective bargaining to negotiate with businesses for higher wages, better working conditions, things that he called bread and butter issues. Okay. The goal of AFL and Samuel Gompers was to improve the lives of American workers. And so our standards here, her, our standard focus here is on labor unions, but specifically on the American Federation of Labor and Samuel Gompers as the leader. We're going to identify these two. And this conflict and compromise of political and social interactions are the themes. A union is a group or membership of workers or laborers that fight for fairness in the workplace. Some characteristics of some things they wanted was a minimum wage, no child labor, you know, not ch no children working in the workforce, 40 hour work week instead of 60 and 70, they wanted some time off, equal pay for men and women, safer working, just better wages, better pay, uh, and they these are bread and butter issues that uh, Sam Gulfer spoke of. Examples of unions are the national, today are NEA or National Education Association teachers, American Bar Association with lawyers, American Medical Association with doctors. So these are examples of some unions. Um, all right, some non-examples are not many waiters or cooks or convenience store clerks have a union minimum wage jobs they don't have unions usually skilled crafts have unions and this one was also a skilled craft union the American Federation of Labor so we see the American Federation of Labor began 1896 to 1955 it's going to be in 1955 it would be merged with the uh, Congress of Industrial Organizations or CIO AFL-CIO would be merged together anyways AFL are craft unions. There were 13 national and international unions to join together to form the American Federation of Labor. It began a labor movement helping workers and giving aid to laborers. It started out in Columbus, Ohio, and they're going to be working on these bread and butter issues. More pay, less work hours, uh, better working conditions, safer working conditions. And their leader was Samuel Gompers. And he is going to be, uh, for over 40 years, a union leader in the American Federation of Labor, of the American Federation of Labor. With the sole purpose of helping workers and, and, and giving aid to those workers for fairness in the workplace, better wages, and they're going to have to strike sometimes, and they will use a strike. That's a work stoppage. They refuse to work until the owner or managers of the mill meet their demands for safety, and better wages and shorter work hours. Some of the strategies you use were collective bargaining. Collective means more than one. The collective group, their strength in numbers, they would meet with management and work out these uh, negotiations for employees. One of the things they used as a strategy was strikes, where they refused working until their demands were met. Boycotts was another strategy. We refused to buy certain items that were being made by companies to force them into meeting their demands. And closed shop was uh, were workplaces where employers uh, had to agree to hire only union members. Okay, and was were these unions effective under Samuel Gompers and the American Federation of Labor? If we look at this chart here. 
1900, a union worker would make uh, 53 hours would be the workload for 34 cent an hour. A non-union would work 62 hours but only get 15 cent an hour, which is less than half. In 1910, uh, the weekly hours come down to 40 hours at 40 cent an hour for union workers and then non-union was still close to 60 at 59.8 hours a week at almost 19 cent an hour and then in 1920 a union worker would make uh, 45.7 hours a week average and their hourly earnings were 88 cent and a non-union hourly wage was 56 cent at 53.5 hours so you can see that being a part of a union helped with your work hours during the week and with how much money you were paid each hour these are averages so unions were effective under uh, under the leadership of uh, Samuel Gumpers and the American Federation of Labor all right ask questions in class look back over this good luck on the test and quiz and good luck on the EOCT